So next talk is by um, Oli Sarikivi on minimization of uh, symbolic transducers. Uh, thank you. And uh, yes, uh, this will be uh, about work I've done with uh, Margus Veanes uh, during uh, two internships at uh, Microsoft Research. And the motivation is that many useful stream processing computations can be represented as uh, transducers. And if we have a pipeline of these transducers, then we can apply fusion to produce a single transducer for, for this pipeline. And this uh, reduces communication overhead and exposes opportunities for optimizations. Uh, however, fusion has a uh, worst case quadratic blow up as a form of product construction, and this makes it a uh, target for uh, reduction. So we've built a tool for performing these fusions that uses uh, symbolic transducers as its intermediate representation. Uh, and uh, the fusion process fuses adjacent to symbolic transducers in a pipeline until a single one remains. And during this process, it, uh, it applies some reductions. Uh, there is a control state reduction method, which is what I'll be talking about now. And there's also a reachability-based branch elimination, which we presented uh, this summer at PLDI. So uh, now for some background. So if you were at Loris's tutorial, this might already be um, familiar. But uh, so a classical automaton has a finite, typically smallish alphabet. And in a symbolic finite automaton, this is replaced with a type from some uh, decidable theory, which might be provided, for example, by an SMT solver. And also concrete transitions are replaced by symbolic transitions, which now have uh, formulas over the input acting as uh, guards. So here we see an example of uh, one uh, such automaton, which has a uh, guard that is using the variable x to refer to the current inputs. And it has accepting states and rejecting states as uh, normal. Uh, then uh, a symbolic finite transducer is a uh, similar kind of uh, a generalization where also the output alphabet is um, replaced by a uh, type from this decidable theory. And now the symbolic uh, transitions also have this uh, list of uh, f output functions uh, which can depend on the input to produce the output. And then finally, a symbolic transducer also has a uh, register for additional state which it can use in the uh, transitions and can update. So uh, here's an uh, example of a symbolic transducer that parses digits. So if we look at this transition here on the bottom, then it has a guard. It's referring to the current inputs here. Uh, it has a list of yields after the guard. Here it's referring to the uh, current uh, register value using the variable r. And uh, finally, it has a register update formula at the end. And uh, it initializes its register at the start. and. Uh, it also has a finalizer, which is something which it can use to produce some uh, final output that can depend on the register when the input stream ends. So our running example will be a pipeline of two symbolic finite transducers, which is a uh, first a smileyfy, which changes uh, any instances of colon right parentheses to this uh, smiley character from Unicode. And then an unsmileyfy, which changes uh, these smiley characters into this colon right parentheses. And it's kind of intuitive that this pipeline is equivalent to just running unsmileyfy because unsmileyfy kind of undoes the work of smileyfy. So what we'll be looking at is the uh, fusion of this pipeline, uh, which now uh, intuitively should reduce uh, to at least unsmileyfy because it's equivalent to unsmileyfy. So if we look at the actual imp implementations as SFTs, here, here they are. So Smileyfy is using two control states to match on the colon right parenthesis uh, pattern. And when it finds that it, it outputs this uh, Smiley character, and on Smileyfy just expands all of these uh, Smiley characters into this colon right parenthesis pattern. Um, and then the fusion looks like this. This is... Uh, uh, the state, state space is a uh, product of the state spaces of the components. And uh, uh, essentially, uh, whenever Smileyfy uh, produces output, then unsmileyfy is run on that output. So we can uh, most concretely see that here in this transition, 
uh, which is a fusion of this transition which produces the smiley character from uh, Smileyfy and the Unsmileyfy's unpacking uh, transition which is, has now been applied to this uh, input list here. So this is what we want to minimize, um, or reduce at least. And uh, the approach will look like this. So we encode this uh, symbolic transducer into a symbolic finite automaton, which accepts the valid transductions of this uh, symbolic transducer. And uh, then we minimize this encoding, uh, which gives us an equivalence relation over the control states. And then we apply this equivalence relation back onto the original symbolic transducer to produce the uh, reduced version. So let's look at the encoding. The idea of the encoding is that the inputs will uh, be tuples that represent the transition. So for a nor normal transition, where we still are getting input, the, um, the input tuple for the symbolic finite automaton will include a input component, the current register, then a list of outputs, and a new register value. And the uh, transitions are co encoded in a way that the uh, uh, symbolic finite automaton accepts uh, valid, valid transitions here. Uh, the actual in input type uh, for the encoding will be the sum type of the uh, of the tuples representing uh, a normal transitions and then tuples representing the uh, kind of finalizations which just include the register and the associated list of outputs. And the set of states will be otherwise the same, but we add this uh, additional state for, uh, for the targets of the finalizers, which is the only accepting state in the encoding. So if you look at the uh, encoding of a single transition, um, here we have an example which uh, checks that the current input is greater or equal to one, then it uh, outputs uh, the current register value, and then it increments the input into the register. And uh, the encoding will, have, uh, will be a conjunction of different parts. So first it check, checks that the input for the, in the automaton is uh, like of the correct tuple, tuple type. So this is rep representing a normal transition. And uh, then it has uh, parts for encoding the various parts of the transition. Here I use xi to refer to the input part, xo to refer to the output part of the tuple for the SFA, xr for the register part, and xr prime for the uh, updated register part. So uh, here is, uh, it's kind of uh, just a substitution uh, of these vari various parts. Uh, we require that the uh, uh, list of the outputs, for example, is, uh, is the, um, uh, list of the outputs as specified by the transition, and uh, yeah. So if we look at the look at the uh, encoding of a whole uh, SFA, uh, if we some for some reason wanted to try to minimize on Smileyfy, which already has one control state, then this is what the um, uh, encoding of that looks like. So. Every transition here from unsmileyfy is just mirror mirrored by a similar transition in the uh, in the encoding, uh, which uses this uh, this encoding scheme. Uh, and uh, here we can see the additional uh, final accepting state, which is the target for for the encodings of the finalizers. And um, now, when we uh, have this encoding at hand, then we um, uh, minimize it, which gives us an equivalence relation over the set of states Q. And uh, what we do with this equivalence relation is that we merge equivalent states in the original transducer. Also, one thing we could do if we wanted to was that we could uh, do something less uh, than minimizing uh, the uh, encoding, so if we can reduce it somehow otherwise without paying the kind of full cost of uh, minimization, then that, that would give an equivalence relation that is, uh, that is a subset of the uh, full, full equivalence relation over the states, and it would be safe to use that. Uh, there is one subtlety here that's like when we have registers, the encoding actually also accepts words that uh, don't actually correspond to valid transductions because the automaton uh, cannot uh, in any way enforce that the uh, register kind of doesn't jump around between two transitions. But fortunately, this doesn't affect the safety of the algorithm. It is still safe to use because the uh, symbolic transducer and its encoding agree on the valid transductions. So now if we look at the um, 
uh, running example we have, then unfortunately this is uh, not quite enough. So the problem is that these states are actually not equivalent. Uh, here for the smiley character we get the colon right parenthesis, but in the other state for the smiley character we get colon colon right parenthesis. And this is uh, the problem kind of is that the uh, right um, control state here hangs on to, the, to this colon character unnecessarily, which we can see from the fact that all of the transitions out of 2a will actually yield the colon character as in the next thing. It's slightly disguised here, but we'll get back to that. And uh, what we need is uh, quasi-determinization, uh, which moves output to be as early as possible. And this is a uh, transformation that's used in the minimization of classical transducers, where the uh, initial work was done by Christian Schofrut, uh, and Mary Armori presented a more algorithmic approach, and this has al also been generalized to tree transducers under the name of uh, earliest normal form, which is a more descriptive name in this context at least. So uh, the classical uh, algorithm is pretty simple. Uh, you look at uh, every state in the um, transducer, and then you find uh, the longest common prefixes of outputs in all outgoing transitions. So if you find, uh, find a prefix, then you take that prefix from the outgoing transitions and then you push it back onto the incoming transitions, just kind of, uh, thus kind of moving the uh, output to be earlier. Uh, and then you repeat this process for, lo for all of the control states until you can move nothing more, so you've reached a fixed point. So the way this, uh, uh, this works in the algorithm is that like, this is just uh, used as a pre-processing step here at the start, and the rest of the algorithm just uh, uses the quasi-determinized uh, symbolic transducer uh, for its operation. So, in the special case of uh, symbolic finite transducers, what we do is that we do constant value analysis for all of the yields in the transducer, and uh, uh, namely, we uh, check that uh, for every yield that does this yield only have uh, one value it can have given the context of the guard of its transition. And uh, if we find such constants, then we substitute, the, uh, substitute them in for the uh, yield formulas. And then we can run a variant of this uh, classical quasi-determinization algorithm where we block non-constant yields from being moved. And uh, with this, if we have a uh, deterministic symbolic finite transducer, then first doing the uh, quasi-determinization and then doing the uh, control state reduction method through the encoding will give us the minimal result. Um, and uh, we have a proof of this in the paper. And this is kind of uh, mirroring the uh, minimization result for, for classical transducers. So now if we look at our running example, uh, then uh, if we do the constant value analysis, there's uh, three yield formulas which are kind of not already uh, trivially constant. Um, and we will find that there is actually one yield here that is, is constant given the uh, um, context of the input value being, being this specific character. So then we replace this yield with the, um, with the constant. And now, when we run the quasi-determinization algorithm, then uh, we will actually uh, see, see a prefix here of a colon, uh, which we can then move on to the uh, incoming um, uh, transitions, like so. So here, actually, this, uh, this transition didn't change because uh, this is both, uh, both an uh, outgoing and an incoming, so it was pushed back uh, onto this, uh, this self-loop here. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the effect here was that now the colon is kind of outputted earlier, like already on the edge from 1A to 2A. And uh, after this transformation, these uh, states are actually equivalent, so we fixed the problem of them, out them outputting different things for the smiley character. And then the uh, control state reduction method would uh, actually collapse the states uh, into one representative. So one of these states is chosen as the representative in this merging which could look like this. Okay, so now we have the minimal number of control states, uh, the same as on Smilify. So uh, you might still notice uh, kind of one, uh, one matter here that uh, 
uh, we have one transition more than Unsmileify had. So we've kind of minimized the algorithm, uh, minimized the ST on the uh, uh, kind of uh, automata theoretic side, but then we still have the matter of like what is the most efficient representation of the tran uh, transitions on kind of the modulo theory side of the symbolic automata and transducers. Um, so that's of course then theory specific uh, uh, how, how you how you do these uh, do these minimizations, but that's kind of a, another dimension to consider. So um, we have tested the uh, uh, the effect of this uh, reduction method on uh, fusions of pipelines of symbolic transducers. Um, so there's some. CSV parsing with regular expressions and XML parsing with XPath and uh, uh, some Hoffman decoding. And um, these are pipelines of maybe like four, four or five uh, transducers which are then fused into a single one. And uh, the, uh, the reduction is uh, applied after every individual step of fusion which kind of fuses uh, two adjacent symbolic transducers. And here on the, um, on the removed column we report the sum of all of the control states removed. Uh, and uh, we compare it to the size of the, uh, the uh, resulting transducer at the end, and uh, we can see that the number of states m removed is uh, like a, a large uh, fraction for many, many of these, so we get uh, large reductions, which is good. Um, and uh, the um, reduction times are also uh, reasonable, at least uh, considering the... Um, uh, the application of like if you have uh, some data processing uh, workload, then uh, you're typically writing queries that can run for tens of minutes to hours. So spending uh, time uh, time on running optimizations often is worth it. Okay, so our control state reduction algorithm provides large reductions for these uh, fusions of pipelines that we've been looking at. And it gives us a minimization approach for the uh, special case of deterministic symbolic finite transducers. Uh, this has been implemented in the Automata library. Currently, you'll find implementation, uh, the implementation in my, uh, my fork of the library, but eventually I will merge them back into the main repository. If you look at the paper, you'll uh, also uh, find uh, tricks for quasi-determinization uh, when there are registers. Uh, you'll find a strengthening approach to enable more uh, reduction w if you know some register invariants, and then there's also a, um, a, a construction for doing Hoffman coding using SFTs, which is used in the uh, in the evaluation. And uh, just for some self adver uh, advertisement, uh, I am finishing my PhD soon, and I'll be happy to hear about any opportunities anyone might know about. Thank you for listening. Questions? Okay, just have a quick question. Uh, so with this fusion, how does it relate to deforestation and in terms of the minimization? Uh, the, the fusion, uh, I mean, it, it's a very similar, uh, uh, similar thing as deforestation. I guess deforestation has been uh, uh, studied kind of in the context of functional programming, and this is more in the stream processing, but it's kind of they're kind of mirror images of each other. Okay. And the minimization is in terms of the successful fusion that's been done for the... I'm, I'm not sure I'm aware of like what, what kind of minimizations have been applied in the context of deforestation, so... Uh. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.